Hi everyone, my name is Lily Beltran and I am a data science student assistant at the Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub. Welcome to the second video of the Supervised Machine Learning Artificial Neural Networks video series. If you missed the first video, please refer to the NEPHUB's YouTube channel to watch the previous content. Now let's come back to the big picture of the regression units, which in fact are going to be the building blocks for artificial neural networks. In this visualization, we see a set of inputs, each with weights. The sigma indicates the sum of the products of the weights w's and inputs x's. Then there is a threshold, also known as a activation function applied to the outputs of sigma which is a dot product between x and w vectors. The simplest version of the activation function is the sigmoid, which we already saw for logistic regression. Now we address the concept of artificial neurons, which seek to approximate a function through regression or classification. Artificial neurons can be thought of as logistic regression modules with a sigmoid activation function and trained via gradient descent to minimize the sum of squared error. A bias term is typically added and set to one. The sigmoid activation function can be replaced with other activation functions if we do not need the probability of classification. And artificial neurons are a fundamental building block of neural networks and can be combined to form more and complex models. The upcoming discussion is on neural networks, where we highlight the importance of combining artificial neurons into a network and introducing the key concepts to be discussed in more detail. Notice here we are connecting each input and the bias to every regression unit. Each activation unit is making a different prediction. For instance, it's learning to predict a different class here. Now let's briefly introduce the concepts of more complex and deeper neural networks. In more complex networks, we don't need to decide a priori which variables are being predicted. Deeper networks allow for more complex transformations of the input data, potentially leading to better performance on more challenging tasks. However, deeper networks can also be more difficult to train and may require more data to avoid overfitting. And suppose we are trying to predict one class, but from three different composite characteristics, then this would require composition. We will now discuss the concept of neural networks to a more detailed example of a simple neural network layer. This slide serves as a simple example of a single layer network, demonstrating how it can be used to simultaneously train multiple classifiers. The example considers input instances with two features, x1 and n2. The goal is to build a classifier for x1 and N2, x2, as well as a classifier for x1 or x2. A simple single layer network with two artificial neurons is set up for this purpose. Now we present an example of using single neurons or perceptrons to perform binary classification. The weights between each input and neuron are represented as w, j, and i. For simplicity, the heavy side activation function is used in this example. The goal is to train the network to correctly classify input instances based on their features. Now we outline the incremental training process for a single layer network with perceptrons. For each input sample x, a prediction is made using the activation function for instance, in this case, the heavy side function. And the weights are updated immediately after each prediction using the update rule that is seen here on the right hand side where w of j prime equals to w of j plus n of y of j and y minus y hat of j times x. This process is repeated over the entire training set for many epochs, and the goal is to adjust the weights to correctly classify input instances based on their features. The heavy side function is simpler than sigmoid. It returns zero if n is less than zero and one if n is greater than or equal to zero. Here, we'll train a set of weights to learn the OR functions. 
to do this, we do a dot product of the x of i's and dw. Then we set y hat based on whether we are at or above or below. We are using SGD, so we adjust W after every instance. And so we do that in all these slides, adjust W after every instance. And much like with linear regression, we draw a line to separate the hyperplane, as we see here in this graph. Now let's discuss the training process of the perceptron algorithm. The perceptron algorithm learns linear decision boundaries similar to logistic regression. However, unlike logistic regression, the perceptron predicts class labels, not probabilities. The algorithm is guaranteed to coverage, converge if the classes are linearly separable. In other words, if there exists a linear boundary that can correctly classify all instances, the perceptron will find it. This guarantees the ability of the perceptron to learn and classify linearly separable data sets. This slide presents the code to train and use a perceptron algorithm in scikit-learn. The code imports the perceptron class from the sklearn.linear underscore model module and creates an instance of the perceptron class and sets the random state parameter to 42 for reproducibility. The fit method of the perceptron class is called with a training set, X train and Y train, to train the perceptron. And the predict method of the perceptron class is called with a test set, X test and we make predictions on new unseen data. Perceptrons are a vector of artificial neurons in a single layer that often produce one hot encoding of the outputs. One hot encoding in machine learning is the conversion of categorical information into a format that may be fed into machine learning algorithms to improve prediction accuracy. Perceptrons can be trained simultaneously based on the gradient descent style update with a learning rate. However, they are guaranteed to converge only for linearly separable data. For non-linearly separable data, perceptrons need to be composed in layers to achieve better results. And that concludes part two of the supervised machine learning artificial neural networks video series. Thank you very much for watching.